Well, hello everyone. Um, uh, I'll start off with a brief introduction and hope to get right into the, the actual contents. My name is Ian Gold, I'm actually four. I'm, I'm something called a lead expert, which is the title I read inside of this project, which is a project that I actually do quite like very much. Uh, the project is concerned, I think it's important for you all to understand, it's concerned with youth employment and opportunity, but I see that as an aspect of local development. We're saying that the conditions of local development and generation and the opportunities available for young people can't really be neatly separated. And of course it goes on uh, in terms of the impact of what's happening with young people and has been well before the crisis. It's not just about young people. Now, if you look at, for example, well, some people here might have a thing to say about Europe 2020 and achieving various goals of competitiveness, inclusion, more, more advanced and competitive economies, skills, and that kind of thing. Are we going in the right direction today? Well, it's questionable, obviously. And of course, anyone who wants to have a pension that's going to get paid, if we're going to put that on the back of a declining active population, which is also working in a low quality, unstable way, well, then the problematic too. And just general issues of competitiveness, people talk about breaks, globalization, what have you. All this feeds down to a local level that's functioning or not functioning all across Europe. And there's something called hysteresis or scarring, which is an important issue, which has to do with the long-term effects on a person that's gone through significant unemployment or poor employment due to an economic crisis, which, which go on after the economic crisis. Yeah? You, this is very important, because eventually someone will be able to say, well, the crisis is over. But the effects on um, actual people will go on for a long time after and become well, an individual problem for those people, but it also a problem for everyone else because we live in an interdependent system. Um, I think with there, I'm going to do it. I had some comments uh, to do about the, the statistics about unemployment and so on, but I think you've had enough bad news already and know why it's important. What I'd really like to get to here is, as we all know, many of the causes of poor opportunities and unemployment uh, are often connected with big macro level issues, austerity and this kind of thing. Uh, the real question here we want to look at is what can be done on the local level, yeah, first, and secondly what can the EU level, policy program or what have you, do to help them do anything about this at the local level? What can be done to create jobs and opportunity for young people? Um, with that, I first encourage everyone to introduce themselves as quickly, what across the board, and then we'll get into the, the comments. So, good morning, everybody. I'm Robert Strauss, and I work in the Employment Analysis Unit in Media Employment. But I'm not an expert on the European Social Club or how to access it. Yeah, good morning, everybody. My name is uh, Giorgio Wazzini Marini. I'm working in the Youth in Action uh, Unit of the DG Education and Culture. Uh, so, dealing with uh, youth uh, policies and, and programs. Good morning. My name is Felix Rohn. I'm also working for DG Education and Culture, but I'm working for youth. I'm working for vocational education and training and the related program, Leonardo da Vinci. Good morning, my name is Marco Zoravic and I'm the head of the unit uh, Entrepreneurship 2020 in the Director General of the President Ministry. Okay, well, we'll begin the discussion here, but I really wish to encourage people from the floor at any time to ask uh, a question while you have them available, because they might, they might not linger if you're thinking of asking them later on during the sandwiches. Yeah. Um, well, first of all, I'd like to hear what 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 is the essential thing that you would say that you you have to offer from your area of expertise for contributing to youth employment and opportunity. Well, thanks. Um, Sixty-four thousand dollar question. Um, I mean, what what can the European Commission or what can Europe offer? Um, I mean, money and knowledge. Money money in the form of um, funding. Um, from, the, from the cohesion funds um, and knowledge, um, because we heard in the previous panel um, an awful lot of work has been done, an awful lot of uh, localities, regions, etc., uh, are confronting exactly the same problems, uh, and we don't need to reinvent the wheel. So, the, the, the two things fundamentally uh, that, that Europe can bring or the Commission can bring is uh, means of people finding out from others. So encouraging networks and partnerships, and then uh, money via um, 
the funds to actually enact uh, programs or policies, and, and some of the money can be used to, to strengthen networks. I mean, there, there's a tie-up tie up between the team. Um, perhaps there's something else that DG Employment can offer, and I suppose that's a little close to my own direct field, and that is um, some guidance or some knowledge uh, about what is necessary uh, to be done in order to, to reduce the, the abysmally high levels of youth unemployment um, confronting Europe. Um, we do a little bit of work. Um, the OECD actually does a lot more on what can be done at the local level um, and, and how the local level can interact um, with, uh, with the national and international level uh, to, to reduce uh, youth unemployment. Um, I, I will just add um, that I think you're all aware, but just, just to re-emphasize it, that, that youth unemployment um, is probably seen um, by this commission as, 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 if not the, at least one of the uh, key issues confronting Europe today. I mean, President Barroso, Commissioner Andor, uh, and others uh, stress that youth unemployment is, is the issue. It's, it's the issue um, because um, people who are directly confronted by their children or their brothers and sisters uh, being unemployed uh, feel it directly, uh, but also because of the long-term effects. I mean, Ian mentioned uh, scarring. If you are unemployed for any length of time as a young person, uh, this uh, leads scars uh, for the rest of your working life. I mean, the OECD and others have done a lot of work on this. Your uh, lifetime income is substantially reduced uh, if you're unemployed for any length of time as a young person. Um, Ian also mentioned the, the Europe 2020 goals. I mean, if we are to substantially reduce poverty, if we're going to get the unemployment rate down, if we're going to get employment rates up to 75%, um, not only do we need to get unemployed people into work, but we need to make sure that they are going to be in work in the future. They have to be uh, more employable than they are now. Uh, youth unemployment is the worst possible way uh, to uh, have later employability. Yeah, uh, well, first, uh for let's say, entering into what, let's say, uh, the, the youth in action or the future uh, youth activities at European level can offer. Uh, I would like to make probably a, a general <clears throat> um, introductory remark on what the DGAI offers in terms of, you know, uh, contribution to youth employment. Of course, uh, as the words uh, say it, uh, DG is focusing on educational um, programs. So the idea is rather to support, to try to promote uh, the employability of young people, meaning not the direct employment, but to invest in human and social capital to, to, to uh, develop, to help young people to develop those skills, competences, uh, behaviors that will help them to uh, find a job or will uh, ease their, their task of finding a job. So this is rather important in order to understand what is the scope and the mandate of the DG Education and Culture in, in the Commission. Uh, this said, I was really struck by the interesting, very interesting uh, uh, inputs uh, provided in the, in the panel this morning particularly uh, the region in Emilia Romagna who presented the, the tree where all the sectors, uh, the different sectors were put together in order to maximize, say, the, the, uh, the action of the region in terms of then linking uh, the, the, uh, the different uh, sectoral uh, policies and initiatives to, to, uh, to make them more efficient. And this is exactly the idea that uh, the DG yeah, has for the future, uh, for the future programming cycle, the, the Erasmus for All program you might have known, which will be the successor of Youth in Action uh, program and uh, lifelong learning programs. So the idea is to put under one single umbrella and framework uh, the different uh, sectoral programs and to try to develop as much as possible cross-sectoral cooperation. Um, 
what is the youth part? So my my uh, let's say my unit is going to bring into this uh, wider part. I think that youth um, the my unit deals not only with youth, but also with non-formal education. And I would like to see, probably this is a small suggestion for Emilia Romagna, to see another branch of the tree in some years' time, where we uh, link also non-formal uh, education activities into uh, this uh, bigger part. Non-formal education is, um, in fact, uh, activities that take place outside of the uh, of the formal education or vocational education uh, uh, patterns, and but they in fact um, aim at educating people not only in terms of literacy but also in terms of uh, other educating other types of intelligence of in that all individuals have. So uh, creativity, uh, social, uh, uh, social. Care capability of, be, uh, of being a, a social actor. And these, these skills, these competences are the competences that are more innovative, the ones that are, uh, that are give the possibility to individuals to make a difference in today's world. So, um, in fact, uh, non-formal education helps young people to um, be empowered, to be more responsible to uh, develop ideas and put them into practice. So it's not really a startup, it's not a, a, a self-employment, but it's an education to self-employment, an education to also proactiveness in the, in the, in the, in the job, in the employment market. So uh, these kind of activities should be promoted in our view since the, the earlier age. So even with small activities like a youth transnational exchange uh, or via uh, volunteering in the local community or abroad, they, they help young people to develop skills that will be really useful in today's world. So I will not be very long because other colleagues will uh, also uh, give their inputs. But, um, so what local uh, communities can do, of course, integrate non-formal education uh, programs and activities in their portfolio, give value to these, uh, to these activities uh, as a complementary uh, activities uh, to, uh, of course, uh, uh, developing or matching uh, skills with labor market or, or, or um, increasing literacy and, and formal education competences. Uh, what the Commission will do will in fact try to, of course, provide funds to support activities also at grassroots level uh, to help uh, local communities, regions, associations, civil society actors to, to really boost uh, these, uh, this, type, this kind of activities. And from the policy point of view, uh, it will bring an idea that youth policy, as colleague was mentioning, that should be somehow even somehow cross-sectoral, comprehensive. Consider the young person as a uh, having different uh, challenges and different needs, not just uh, the need to find an employment, but everything is somehow linked. So this is what will be the, the contribution of, um, of DGAC in very general terms. Okay, thanks. So Eddie, you want to stop talking for a bit, which is fair enough, but I would ask you later on to get back to the issue of validation of non-formally and formally required competencies, and also for the mobility of such validation, if you can have a think. Uh, you mentioned it. I, I want to mention validation of uh, informal and non-formal learning that uh, we at European policy level we want to promote that but it's up to member states depending on the systems even up to regions to uh, to, to put in the chaos. but okay I leave that away uh, we come back to that uh, later I would like to start with two concrete examples